This is Math 151, and we are going to dig into the chain rule for derivatives. And the chain rule is about composite functions. In other words, when you have a function inside of a function, uh, sometimes the notation is written like that, f of g of x, uh, also written like this. So notice this is not f times g. This is g inside of f. This is a function plugged into another function. So for example, if I had um, sine of x to the fifth, or the square root of 3x to the fourth uh, plus 5. Notice I have an x to the fifth plugged inside of sine. Recognizing these functions with inside functions is going to be kind of crucial for us. Or I have the square root uh, 3x to the fourth plus 5 inside the square root function. One way I could think about this is uh, if I said, I'm just going to let u be a dummy, let u equal. Uh, x to the fifth. And when I write u like this, I'm saying the function u. I'm just going to use a u. So u is x to the fifth. So I'm going sine of whatever u is. u happens to be x to the fifth. Or in this case, if I let u be, uh, <laughs> let u be that, I'm going the square root of u, but I know that u is that function. Again, these are not multiplied together. They're a function nested inside another function. Here's the chain rule in two different notations. Remember, this is uh, g plugged into f. Like in this case, g would be x to the fifth, f would be sine, a function plugged into another function. And this is the other notation for the compositions. So if I have a composition function, the derivative of it, I'm peeling away layers. So it's derivative of the outside function multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. So notice again what I do is I take the derivative of the most outside one, and then I take the derivative of the inside one, and I multiply those things together. If I'm going to take the derivative of this, it would be, well, let's see, the derivative of sine, that's the most outside function, that's our f in this case, we know it's cosine. So it'd be cosine of whatever is in there, times, and now, in my mind, like I've taken the derivative of sine, so now I'm going to take the root derivative of this x to the fifth. And derivative of x to the fifth is <laughs> 5x to the fourth. So this would be 5x to the fourth times the cosine of x to the fifth. Now uh, I'm going to write it also in, um, in Leibniz notation. If I have some change in y with relate, you know, in relation to x, that's what I'm doing here, I'm trying to find the change of this whole function in relation to x, at little increments of x. I could have uh, kind of this intermediate function, which I'll call u. So I could say, how's y changing with respect to u? And I multiply that with how the change in y is changing with respect to x. So in this case, if I do the same problem in that style, um, I want to find the derivative of sine of x to the fifth. And so I notice it's a composite function. So I've already defined u as x to the fifth. Um, u prime, I'm, I know I'm going to need to know the derivative of u as well. Just that power rule, bring it down, subtract one, is that. So there's some pieces for me. So y is equal to sine of u is the thinking that I'm doing. Right, like I'm ignoring what's inside this function right now and just to find this part. So change of y with respect to change of x. Change of y with respect to u times change of u with respect to x. This part right here, I know that this is cosine of whatever u is multiplied by, well, the change of u with respect to x is 5x to the fourth. And then now all I want to do, I want it in terms of x, so I can, I know that u is x to the fifth. I can plug that back into here. Cosine x to the fifth times 5x to the fourth. Boom, it's just that. So there's kind of my two ways of notating the same idea, which is the chain rule. Again, we have assumptions that f and g are differentiable.
right? Like if we can't differentiate these, then we, we can't go anywhere with it. So let's go ahead and try and find the derivative for k. And again, two ways I could do it. I could do it with my Leibniz notation. I could do it thinking uh, just with kind of my function notation. And I, I try to be comfortable with both forms. This, this notation will come back, particularly when you start to do integrals. So I think I'll, I'll do this one first. So I'm going to think of this as y equals that. So I'm going to let u equal the thing that's inside. So y equals u to the so now if I think about this then, change in y with respect to change in u multiplied by change in u with respect to x. This and that's going to be multiplied by this. Well, I can just take the derivative of that. So power rule 9x squared power rule 10x, that's a 1, power rule, negative 7, that's a constant. So it's that times that. And now I, I want my answer in terms of x, right? Because I'm looking for the derivative as a function in x. So I can just plug my u back in then. 4 times u cubed. u is, that I just had it as a little placeholder, cubed multiplied by the derivative of it. So that's thinking in this manner. If you want to be a little more uh, brutish about it, brute-ish, not brood, um, I can see that this is inside that fourth power. So as I take the derivative of it, I'm going to go four times whatever's in here to the third. So notice what I did is I took the derivative of what's the furthest out, Right, that's like my u. I just had it as a placeholder. And then that's going to be multiplied by whatever the derivative of what's inside is. And I take the derivative of that, and I've got the answer as well. And that's kind of thinking of it in this way. They're really the same thing, just a couple different ways to think about it. All right, let's go ahead and do these. So looking at j of x, um, before I have the chain rule, I, I'm, this is like just a straight quotient to me, right? So I, I would use my quotient rule. But I think I can be a little more clever about that. Since my, since my numerator here is 1, I could just rewrite this as the denominator to a negative power. Right? That's what negative exponents do. They, they flip the fraction, take the reciprocal. Let's use chain rule. So this, I'm thinking of this as this thing to the power of negative 2. So if I peel away the layers, first off I'm going to take the derivative of just this something to the negative 2 power. So I can use my power rule for that. Negative 2, the something, that would be my u if I was using Leibniz notation. And then my power decreases by 1, negative 3. And that is multiplied by the derivative of what's inside. You know, I've peeled off that negative 2, so now I take the derivative of what's inside. That would be my derivative of my u, and that is power rule 10x, and that's a constant, so 0. So what I have is negative 2 times 10, uh, negative 20x times 5x squared minus 2 to the negative 3. I'm going to take care of that negative exponent. I'm going to push that back down to the denominator. So negative 20x over 5x squared minus 2 cubed. And this is j's derivative. Substantially less work than the quotient rule. This doesn't do away with the quotient rule for me, but it does give me some advantages. Cos cubed. I'm going to think of this in terms of, of Leibniz. So y equals cos to the third power of x. So I'm going to let u be cosine of x. So y would be uh, u cubed. The derivative of u, well, the derivative of cosine we know uh, is negative sine. 
So now we can say is the derivative of y, the change in y with respect to u, multiplied by the change of u with respect to the change in x. So the derivative of this is 3u squared, power rule, times the derivative, this looks like a y, this is a, this is a u, of this, right, this derivative, the derivative of this. So multiplied by a negative sine x. Now if I plug that u back in there, that's a cosine. So this would be negative 3 cosine squared x. Uh, yeah, because it's squared, times sine x. I'm being asked to find the equation of the tangent line to this function when x is equal to 2. So let's think about this. I'm going to rewrite this as uh, 3x minus 5 to the negative 2, negative second power. And I could go Leibniz. I could go either route for this. But if I'm going to find that derivative, I'm going to take this outside function. So power rule, negative 2 to the uh, of whatever it is times whatever it is. And remember, the power decreases by 1 times that. And that is going to be multiplied by the derivative of what's in there, of what's left, which is just 3. So this is negative 2 times 3, uh, negative 6 times 3x minus 5 to the negative third power, which is negative 6 over 3x minus 5 to the third. So there's my derivative. There's the slope of the tangent line at every point along this where, where it exists. Now I want to know, how about when x is equal to 2? So first off, I'm going to need the, to know the point. Where does that point fall on this graph? So original equation, uh, 6 minus 5 is 1, 1 squared is 1, so 1. So the point is, is 2, 1. That's the point on h, right? Whatever h's shape is, I'm finding the tangent line that goes through that point at 2, 1. So what I'm, I know so far is y is equal to, uh, sorry, y minus the y component is equal to the slope times x minus the x component of that point. I use that point slope form. So now all I need is the value of that slope when x is 2, and I can get that from my, my derivative. That's what that tells me. So I plug 2 into there, negative 6 over... Uh, 3 times 2 minus 5 cubed. Uh, this is a 1. 6 minus 5 is 1. To the third power is 1. So it looks like that's negative 6. There it is in point slope form. If I wanted it in slope intercept form, I could manipulate it to get there. Here is another example. Notice I have secant of this thing. So if I want to do my substitution, I'd say u is that thing. And then this I'm finding the derivative of secant of u, which would be whatever the derivative of secant is, which I know that it's secant tends tangent, times the derivative of u, like that. So notice. Um, derivative of secant, secant, blah, tangent, blah, times the derivative of blah. <laughs> if I peel that away, that would be secant of whatever that input is times tangent of whatever that input is times the derivative of that. So chain rule, I'm not chain rule, sorry, power, power rule, 20x to the fourth plus 2. There it is right there. Uh, you might put this out front, but I mean, it's this times this times this. Okie doke. Let's take a peek at this thing. Wow. This is crazy uh, because I've got um, this multiplied by that. So I've got product rule involved. So right now, let me just do a little, a little substitution thing. I'm going to say f, the function f, is the 3x minus 2 to the 7th. 
and g is uh, 2x plus 1 to the fifth. And, and I'll worry about the derivatives of these later. I'm just trying to figure out like my steps, what I need to do here. So h is f times g. All right, this is not a composite function. Like f isn't plugged into g. This is just this thing, this thing here multiplied by that thing there. So I know my product rule. It's derivative of the first one times the second one plus derivative of the first one times the second one. Now, when I go to take the derivative of f, notice that, that is a composite function itself. So I'm going to have to use chain, uh, not, yeah, I'm going to have to use chain rule. So I'm going to have to use chain rule in order to get the derivative of f and chain rule to get the derivative of g. So I've got chain rule embedded inside the product rule. Who we? f prime, the, the derivative of f. So first off, I can do my power rule. 7 times uh, 3x minus 2 to the 6th times the derivative of this thing that's in here, which is just a 3. So that right there is the derivative of f multiplied by g, just g as it is. So 2x plus 1 to the 5th plus the derivative of g. So the derivative of this part right here. So it's something to the fifth power times the derivative of the something, derivative of 2x is 2, and that's still multiplied by f. So notice we have derivative of f, all of this, times g, plus derivative of g, all of this, times f. Uh, let's clean this thing up. 7 times 3 is 21, so this would be 21 times 3x minus 2 to the 6th times 2x plus 1 to the 5th plus 5 times 2 is 10. 10, and I'm going to put this 3x minus 2 in the front just because it's in the front here. Uh, 3x minus 2, 7, not exactly the front, in front of the other one, uh, times 2x plus 1 to the 4th. Now this is this is pretty good, man. That was hard work. We got here, but we can actually do a little bit better in simplifying this. Super clever. This is fantastic. Um, notice my 2x plus 1. I've got five of them here and four of them here. So one thing I can do is I can factor out uh, four of these 2x plus 1s. So uh, 2x plus 1 to the fourth. Notice that's going to take this one out entirely and leave me just one of those. I can also, similar thinking, if I notice this 3x minus 2 to the 6th and 3x minus 2 to the 7th, this has 6 of them, this has 7 of them, so I can factor out 6 of these 3x minus 2s, taking out all of these and leaving one of these. So that leaves me 21 of these plus 10 uh, of these. That's still pretty darn good. It actually looks a little cleaner than, than this to me. Um, I can simplify what's going on in here. So distribute this 21. 42x plus 21. Distribute this 10. Combine up some like terms here. 42 plus 30. 21 minus 20 is 1. So this whole thing reduces to that. And I'm left with this is the derivative of h. Whoo! Feels so good. All right. So uh, j of x is x over 2x plus 3, that quantity cubed. And we want to find, we sure want to find the derivative of that. So if I think about the quotient rule, I'm going to think of this as f of x over g of x, right? Where x is f of x, 2x plus 3 cubed is g of x. So my quotient rule pushes me to a derivative of the numerator times just the denominator minus a derivative of the denominator times just the numerator 
over denominator squared. Uh, derivative of x is just 1. Uh, g of x is itself minus, and I don't need the 1. The derivative of g. Notice I'm going to use chain rule on this because this is this to the third power. So take the derivative of that third power first with respect to what's in here. And then multiplied by the derivative of what's in there, which is just a 2. Multiplied by the f of x, which is an x. Notice that all of this is the derivative of g, and f of x is just that. And then bottom squared, so if I squared this, it's going to be to the sixth power. To the third power, to the sixth power, is to the sixth, to the third power squared is to the sixth power. So let's work to combine this thing up. 2 times 2x is 6x. So now what I can do is I notice there's a 2x plus 3 cubed and a 2x plus 3 squared. So I'm going to factor out a 2x plus 3 squared. Right? There's, there's like two of them multiplied together here, two of them multiplied together here. So that leaves me... And if I take two of them out, there's one of these left. And if I take both of these out, there's just a, a minus 6x left here. And that's over 2x plus 3 to the 6th. So here I can combine up some, some like terms. 2x minus 6x is negative uh, 4x. And I notice that this 2x plus 3, there's two of them here, and it cancels out two of them here, leaving me that to the fourth power. There's that derivative. Algebra intensive. Here's our last example, and it really illustrates how the chain rule can deal with uh, functions nested inside functions, inside functions, inside functions. So notice this is cosine to the fourth power of 7x uh, squared plus 1. So I could, could rewrite this as cosine of 7x squared plus 1. The whole thing is to the fourth power. So do you see how I have a function inside of a function inside of a function? It's kind of tripled, tripled in. Um, this idea of kind of peeling away outside layers re really pays here. I, I would just have another, like, another, if I was doing Leibniz, I would have another dummy variable in here, like wedged in here, maybe du in terms of dv, uh, and then dv in terms of dx. So... First off, let me kind of do this abstractly. If I let uh, g of x equal 7x squared plus 1, f of x equal cosine, and h of x equal input to the fourth power, I could think of this function as h on the outside and then uh, cosine on the inside of that, and then the 7x plus 1 on the inside of that. You see how this is plugged into this, which is plugged into this. So if I go to use the chain rule on this, I take the derivative of this outside one, just of whatever's in there. And then in a sense, that's kind of used up. So then I would multiply that by the derivative of the next inside one, bent, times the derivative of the next inside one peeling away the layers from the outside. So in this case, if I if I think about this one, the, the outside layer, the, the most outside function is the fourth power. So this would be then four, and then whatever's in there, to the third. So that's my derivative of h times f of g of x. And now I've, I've peeled that away, so now I'm going to take the derivative of cosine. And I know the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so that's multiplied by negative sine of whatever's in there. And so I've peeled away the fourth, I've peeled away the cosine. So now I just have to take the derivative of what I called uh, g, the 7x squared plus 1. And that's just a little power rule, 14x. And these are all uh, multiplied together. So let me gather up some terms here. I have a negative times a 4 times a 14x. So that's negative uh, 56x times uh, cosine cubed of this, 
times sine of this. Chain rule is another uh, crucial skill for us in this class. This is uh, this is something, especially if you're going to go on in the calculus series, you want to have chain rule down. So spend your time on this. Ask questions in the forum. Message me with them. And work hard on those practice problems.